Hey guys, welcome, welcome. I am uh, Ray Parrish. You guys may know me as Dr. Death. I'm coming at you guys live here on my platform, YouTube. I'm going to give it a few minutes for other people to join me. And uh, I know if you guys maybe have followed me before, I have been on Periscope at 26 Dr. Death. Uh, I'm on Twitter at 26 Dr. Death as well. I'm on YouTube right now. What I am discussing, and if you guys are maybe new to the party, you guys maybe kind of know what's going on, you really know what's going on, the reason why I am on here is to really tell you guys what we stand with Oakland is, why we're here, and where we're going forward. Before further ado, I do want to make sure that you guys at home can actually hear me. And uh, give me one second, let me just make sure. Um, give me one moment. I am live. Want to make sure that you guys can hear me because I can. I don't have a chat. Give me one second, guys. Just waiting for you guys to pile in, making sure that you guys. Yeah, we're here. All right, guys. So we're officially live. You guys can hear me. Hey, guys, what's going on? Again, I am Ray. You guys may know me as Dr. Death. And assuming you guys haven't been hiding under a rock and you guys know what's been going on on our uh, sports platform the last few weeks here in the Northern California community, we stand with Oakland, have obtained known attorneys. Jim Quinn and Eric Hodgstad. For those of you guys who aren't familiar with Jim Quinn, he is the attorney that defended the NFL Players Association in the early 90s when he defended and what concluded in what we now know as NFL free agency. Now, in my respective community, wherever I go here in Sacramento, in West Sacramento, I have fans who aren't even, I have friends, excuse me, who aren't even Raider fans who really want to know what is going on with, as, as they see it on social media, we're suing the Raiders, or we're trying to keep them here by suing them. I want to get something very clear here. We Stand With Oakland is a coalition of fans, and you don't have to be a Raider fan. Maybe you're a business owner. Maybe you're a Bears fan. You're another fan, but you can stand with us. And I'm going to tell you, why we're standing, and what got us to this point, and where we plan on going forward. And I want to make something clear here. We're not suing anybody. At this moment in time, we have retained Jim Quinn to discover all the facts at hand that resulted in the Raiders' approved conditional relocation to Las Vegas. And I'm going to put it, I want to paint a picture for you guys that maybe will help you understand where we're coming from. The NFL, and I've said this before, the National Football League is a monopoly. And I don't mean that in the term of they're just this bad corporation, but in essence, the National Football League, they don't have to compete with any other companies. There's no USFL. It's not like Wendy's has to compete with McDonald's and McDonald's or Burger King. You will never see McDonald's anywhere in the near future have a $15 hamburger because they know that Wendy's will come out with something better and cheaper. There's no other pro league that's football related that will compete with the National Football League that's been tried, tested, and failed. Now, when that happens, or excuse me, let me roll, roll this back. The National Football League states, if you want to be a National Football League city, Chicago, Oakland, Miami, New York, Buffalo. We're going to give you some guidelines for you to meet to be a pro football city. I have those guidelines in front of me, as I right here in front of me. But there's a piece of those guidelines that I'm going to read. There's just one excerpt in that guideline that pretty much portrays a piece of we're very concerned and this is why we have an attorney. But I want to paint this picture for you guys. The NFL makes these rules. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 through 20. 
And I want to ask you, let's say an NFL city like Chicago meets the criteria one through five to be an NFL city and maintain the Chicago Bears. That keeps them, that keeps the Bears moving from Orlando. Let's say the city of Chicago dishes out $300 million in infrastructure costs. Money that doesn't go into the stadium, but goes into the streets and the surrounding neighborhoods. And the city of Chicago meets all these NFL guidelines. But then the NFL could say, yeah, you met these guidelines, but if the Chicago Bears move to Orlando and the Chicago's owner has to pay a $500 million relocation fee, you met those guidelines, but we still want to move them. I ask you, the listener who's watching me, maybe you're on my side, maybe you're my adversary. Who gets to regulate the National Football League? Your city that you live in just spent $300 million in infrastructure costs but the for, for the National Football League, for the Bears, but the NFL ended up saying, you know what, I know you met these guidelines, but we're going to move them anyways. So I want to paint this picture for you guys. Continue, I want to continue to do this. If you have a loved one that's a small business owner like my father, and your loved one, like my father, enters into a contract with another individual, and that other individual does not follow through on their respective contract, what do you think my father would end up doing? My father would probably obtain an attorney, discover all the facts, and go from there. Why can't we do that? Now, many of you guys are saying, well, the city of Oakland kicked the Raiders out. Lenny wanted baseball. Here's the thing. The day of the relocation vote, which was March 27th of 2017, I flew there with Godfather Grizz Jones. We went there, and everything going all over the internet, and this is the main defense, and I really want to address this, is the NFL wanted all 122 acres. They wanted to allegedly kick the A's out. We're going to get to the A's in a second. That's great news. We'll get to that in a second. But allegedly, the NFL wanted to kick the A's off of that site. They wanted to know what was Oakland going to do with the A's because the NFL wanted all 120 acres. But here's the one thing that I want to point out to you guys at home, and if you've been following this. If Libby did not want to get rid of the A's, I ask you this. Has the NFL ever given a formal proposal to the city of Oakland and said, here's our proposal, if you give us 120 acres, we're going to develop the land. If you have that proposal on hand, please tweet the National Football League's proposal for the city, for the city's property at the Coliseum site and the county. If you have that link that the NFL gave a proposal for that land and develop, send it to me. Because here's the point. Let's say there was no written proposal, but it was a gentleman's agreement where Libby Shaft and Roger Goodell said, yeah, we'll shake, yeah, nothing's in writing, but verbally, I will promise you that I will activate the two and a half year lease in the A's clause and have the A's move off the Coliseum site. I will say that in the media right now. Nothing contractual, but I'll say that right now. Let's see if they did do that. Who's to say... Excuse me. Oh. I'm getting told that my sound is too high. Excuse me. Let me go back. If Libby Schaff kicked the A's off the site and told the NFL, I will verbally tell everybody that I will activate the two-year, acti uh, tell the A's to leave, who's to say the National Football League won't say, well, thanks for the 120 acres, but we want more from the city of Oakland. And then Libby says, now you're asking for too much. Then the NFL says, well, we're going to leave now. Now, the city of Oakland is left without the A's, 
the Raiders are on their way out because the NFL said oh, is okay. Now they spent three hundred million dollars. They have nothing in writing from the NFL, and now they have no teams. Then what? Is the city of Oakland supposed to bend over backwards for the National Football League? Why don't we have anything in writing? It states in the NFL bylaws that the National Football League within 30 days is supposed to state its reasons in a local newspaper. That's never been done before. Have, have you seen, you at home, have you read anything in the newspaper that states why the National Football League left the city of Oakland? Anything in the East Bay Times, San Francisco, San Francisco Chronicle? Because I haven't. Now, there's one thing I do want to highlight, and I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to mosey my way on over to the relocation rules, and this is under A, negotiations prior to league consideration. Number one, it says, because league policy favors stable team community relations, club, clubs are obligated to work diligently and in good faith to obtain and to maintain suitable stadium facilities in their home territories. I want you guys to remember that term, home territories, and to operate in a manner that maximizes fan support in the current home community. A club may not, however, grant exclusive negotiating rights to a community or potential stadium landlord other than one, other than the one that's in its current home market. That is, I am not making this up, guys. I promise you, I, that's straight from the NFL guidelines. Let's, let's attack this sentence by sentence. Leak policy favors stable community relations. Clubs are obligated to work diligently and in good faith. Okay, wait, let me forward here. Uh, to maintain suitable stadium facilities in their home territories. The last I checked, that respective territory, you guys are going to cringe and say, no, that's not rare enough. But there's Levi Stadium that's just three to four, year, what, four years old. It has two home locker rooms. It's still in the same home territory. I'm sorry to break it to you, but uh, let, let's talk about there's no ingress and egress. Well, don't is there going to be any of that to the same extent in Las Vegas? There's no tailgating. There's no tailgating in Las Vegas either. So that, that in itself, I'm not arguing that, yes, we're right. That is not what I'm arguing. What we are standing for, the reason why we have cause is to tell you we think that we have merit that the Raiders and Mark Davis and the National Football League did not exhaust all their resources according to their rules. Let's continue. A club may not, however, grant exclusive negotiating rights to a community or potential stadium landlord other than one in its current home territory. If you guys recall... Mark Davis went on the JT The Brick Show, and he was asked, would you entertain Ronnie Lott's proposal? And Mark Davis said himself, it's too late. I gave my word to the governor of Nevada. Now, personally, you know what I would say to that? You're going to give your word to a politician who may not even get reelected because of you, and you're going to abandon a fan base that was buying tickets, your season tickets, while you were giving your tickets away for free? Is that kind of owner what we have? That's, that's first. Number two, I'm reading straight from the guidelines. Last I checked, when Mark Davis signed his lease in 2016, in March of 2016, it says on there he has to act in good faith. Last I checked, I mean, uh, common sense... I'm not a lawyer, but him saying that he gave his word to the governor of Nevada and he wouldn't even entertain a plan by Ronnie Lott, wouldn't you say, I think that has merit. If you give this case to an attorney that's in the discovery phase, I think he may find something. 
that this isn't just about feeling proud and we love our teams. But it's more about were we treated fairly? Because I don't want this done to any other city or any other fans from Chicago to Miami to Buffalo who needs a new stadium and it has a new owner. Here's the one thing I want to get out of this. I want to reel you guys back in here. Who's going to defend us? We've put our blood, our sweat, tears, um, our passion into our respective football teams. And all we ask and what we assume through this whole process is that we had a level playing field. And I've only talked about one of the relocation guidelines, and there's many others. And many of you guys have been have been tweeting me and texting me and saying, I talked to my attorney, and his, my attorney says that it's frivolous. I mean, that's great that you're reaching out to your attorneys, but then I have to ask you, do your attorneys have any experience in antitrust law cases in the discovery phase of this magnitude taking on a conglomerate like this? Do your attorneys have any experience in dealing with the NFL like ours do? That's, that's one I would ask you. But here's also, I'm asking you guys to stand with Oakland, to stand with us. Because this isn't about hating another city. This isn't about hating Las Vegas or L.A. or if the Raiders tried coming to Sacramento, I'd be against that. This is about treating the city right and its teams, and, or excuse me, and its fans. So I ask you guys to join us. We stand with Oakland. And we're fighting the, to keep our culture intact, to be fair, to build a stadium responsibly, and to have a healthy franchise monetarily with business moving forward over the next 30 years, not just the first two, three years in the clips and the glamour. It's not what this is about. But I'm asking you guys to join us in what's fair, what's right. We stand... Uh, Excuse me, GoFundMe.com forward slash we stand with Oakland is a 501c3. I urge you guys to do your research and please do all your research on us. We are not a charity, we are a nonprofit. This is all for uh, a legal fund. But also, so you guys know that GoFundMe isn't our only source of revenue that's coming in, that's coming in. We specifically did this GoFundMe because we want the community to feel like they're making an impact. Because how great would that be if they said, you know what, fans from all over the country, all over California, from California to Florida, everywhere, contributed to a cause that keeps the Raiders where they were born and belong. I want to tip my hat off to the Oakland A's organization. Dave Cabal, tremendous, tremendous, dealt cards where the former ownership uh, Lou Wolf had burnt his bridges and he came in and said, you know what, I need to mend fences. Some of you think that we're stuck here in Oakland, but that's the former administration that was stuck here. I want to be rooted in Oakland, but not just with the A's. Dave Cavall's a smart guy. President of the San Jose Earthquakes, now he's coming on to the A's. The A's, or any pro league, isn't just going to dish out money to people to stuff their pockets. I gotta give it to Dave Cavall. I appreciate him. Mad respect to Dave Cavall, president of the A's, for allowing us to raise money for our respective legal fund. Because this is more than just sports. This is bigger than sports. This is about our community. And you, let's give it to the A's as well, right? One of the major reasons for relocation is that the NFL wanted to kick the A's out of the Coliseum property, off the Coliseum site. But here comes the A's saying, I know they wanted us off, but you know what? We're going to help them. Even if we, if we get $1, if, if, we stand in Oakland, if we stand with Oakland, just get $1 because of the A's, I think it's more symbolic. And for those of you who are saying, yeah, that's a PR move. I gotta break it to you guys. Everything's a PR move. I work in PR. I got my degree. My background is in PR. The A's have nothing to lose but more to gain. So again, I ask you guys, 
please join us. We stand with Oakland. Also, too, there, I have received a couple of questions before I log off. I received some questions from someone on social media, pertinent questions, and I get that. And the questions, I'm going to read, looking, looking, looking. This question was asked by Mike Kligg. He said, my question is, when the city and the county signed a 10-year lease with the A's, wasn't that the writing on the wall? No. And I'll tell you why. That lease has a two-and-a-half-year vacate clause. If the Raiders in the National Football League came to Libby Schaap and said, here is a formal proposal in writing. This is exactly what we want to do. And they'd make it public, I'm sure. That is an excuse or a perfect option or the, the, uh, an option that the NFL would say, well, we want you to exercise this vacate clause that the city of Oakland put in the lease, in the A's 10-year lease, and here's a proposal that legally, when you sign the city of Oakland and the NFL sign on to this lease, you have a proposal from us. You don't have to worry about the National Football League saying, yeah, we want them off, but then backtracking and saying, no, never mind. We don't want to put the Oakland in that position. He's asked also what to do with the lawsuit. What are you hoping to gain? Keep them here, name and colors. We are strictly in the discovery phase. We are going to look at what our best possible options are. And here what I want to tell you is we have merit. And as Jim Quinn said in the press conference, it's supposed to be difficult for teams to move, but yet the NFL incentivizes its owners to relocate teams because they're going to get money if teams relocate. To date, with three teams relocating, the Chargers, the Rams, and the Raiders, owners have made a combined $1.2 billion off of relocation alone, and the players, NFL players, don't see a dime of that. So when it comes time, let's say in 20 years, the Jets don't like their lease, and they want to move to Orlando, and all the other NFL owners are saying, well, we're going to get 500 mil from them. We'll, we'll justify the move to Orlando. It's Florida. You don't pay as high taxes. The players will still love it. It's warmer weather. You see where I'm going with this? Who's going to stand up for the community in New York? For the Jets fans? Or Buffalo? What if the Pegulas decide they want to move to Toronto? What if... The Seahawks in 20 years don't like their lease, and they want to move them to Austin, Texas. Who is going to regulate the National Football League and their rules? Who? I, that's just an honest question. Tweet me at 26 Dr. Death. I wish I had phone lines open, but we're on YouTube. I want to do this YouTube real quick. Who is going to regulate these rules? I'll tell you who. We obtain an attorney because the one thing that the NFL can't do is bend the rules in the court of law. Guys, tweet me at 26 Dr. Death. Um, I hope I've answered any questions. I know that later on I'm going to be like, oh, I missed something. Damn it. All right, guys. Uh, let's take it to the tweets real quick, just in case if anybody tweeted me. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it.